How's everybody doing? Did everybody have fun on the catamaran last yesterday? How awesome of an event did Terry, Anthony, and Bob put on this week? That, that doesn't seem very awesome. How awesome did they do this week? That's more like it. I'm really honored that they invited me to be here on stage. Um, I want to provide some value for you guys and provide you guys some million dollar sales tips, um, whether that's silly videos like you just saw um, and some other things, some little things that I probably, I would say about 70% of the people in this room are probably doing wrong. So let's jump right into it. I got a ton of content. Um, so how many, by a show of hands, how many people are realtors? Let's do that first. All right, so we've got a good chunk, I'd say about 40%. How many people have had a bad experience with a realtor? <laughs> Even if you're a realtor, you can put your hand up. We got some liars in here because everybody's had a bad experience with the realtor. It may not be your realtor, but it could have been the realtor on the other side. Um, a lot of people look at realtors, um, unfortunately, like used car salesmen. Um, and why is that? It's because a lot of times realtors rely on the almighty MLS to market for them. And that's all they do. Um, and there's not a lot of uh, exposure beyond that. So how else does your market market your home besides the MLS? Um, so let me tell you a little bit about, I was an investor first uh, before I ever became a, a realtor. Um, the, the issue was a lot of times when we were buying properties, especially when we were starting out, realtors would give us numbers uh, that were really unrealistic of what they thought we could sell the house for, and they still got paid. Um, and then I also found that a lot of realtors did not have really much of a marketing plan besides what their brokerage gave them. Um, and most brokerages, uh, mortgage plan, marketing plans a lot of people are doing is less than $500. Um, so this presentation is to help you guys give your realtors a system to follow, um, give you guys some tips and to help you hold your realtor accountable. So what we're going to cover is how your mark realtor should market your property, how much your realtor should be spending on marketing, and how much money, in my opinion, if they just slap it on the MLS. So in my opinion, if you're doing some sort of development, uh, you should have some sort of signage. This is an example of a 4 by 4 sign. You can get these made um, at several different places. Uh, depending on the development, we get a four by eight sign. Every rehab that you've got going on that requires more than a three month renovation, if your local ordinance allows it, I would put on the biggest sign that you can get away with. Uh, this just lets the neighborhood know, number one, that your market is available for sale. Uh, on that sign, there should be several things. Number one, there should be a website. Uh, what I preferably is a website that people can go to to get information, not about the realtor, but information about your house that you have for sale. So there should be, if you have a house at 123 Main Street, a realtor should buy the domain www.123mainstreet.com or 123main.com. Now potential buyers that are driving through the neighborhood can see that sign, go to that website, get more information. We also put a, a text writer on there, um, and then obviously a phone number. They can co-brand it with you with your company's logo, another project by ABC Home Renovations, LLC. Um, but you definitely need to be doing signs. This is who I get my signs made up through, um, and it's fairly cheap. Uh, sometimes even when they have them on sale, I'm getting a four by four sign for a hundred and, and 25 bucks, 150 bucks. So uh, I talked about the website. Uh, your realtor should be working. If, if they don't know how to build a website, they should be working with someone that does know how to build a website. I, I would talk to my man in the back there if you need help with websites or uh, Bob, but uh, definitely you should be getting a website for every renovation that you guys are doing because this is where the people are going to find out information about your property. So these are just some various um, examples of websites. Uh, this is one example. This is an organization called Agent Marketing. 
Um, and they're not sexy websites by any means, but it has all the information for the house. It has a property map, photo gallery, the copy of the 3D tour, I'll show you all that. Um, and, and again, you can use it as a construction site of what it will have with renderings, room dimensions, that sort of thing that people are gonna be interested in. Um, it's my recommendation. I'm not a big fan of, um, as a real estate agent, to use Zillow to get leads. One thing I recommend though is the agent getting what's called a, a premier agent. This allows them to do what's called a coming soon listing. And they can do this before your listing is up. If you're just the investor yourself, you can do a first sale by owner on Zillow. And uh, that will then let people know that this property is gonna be coming to the market. Um, a lot of times Zillow will give more credence to a coming soon than it will an active listing. Now Zillow's changing and they may get rid of the coming soon altogether. So different areas um, are different with the coming soon. Um, but if a uh, way around that is you can do a for sale by owner to get it up on Zillow because then it also syndicates it to Trulia. And this is a way to market your home before you ever have any market time on the MLS. Yeah, so we do uh, what we do. If we market any house for sale as a real estate agent in, in my market, um, we do have to sign an agreement that we are listing it. And so we have to then upload it to the, what they call the private listing network. A lot of your MLSs have a private listing network. You should also, before your house is done, check with your local MLS and your realtor and find out if you have a private listing network. I've sold properties on the private listing network um, where the, where the, because agents are scouring that and you're not accumulating that market time. So that's a very powerful tool. So great question. Um, I recommend doing what's called a coming soon video. This is what gets the hype going on the property. Um, and then you can then send this link on the Zillow page. You can also put that on the website that you create for the property. Um, I create a Facebook page for each of my properties. Uh, this is something I recommend. This is a way to hack Facebook, essentially. Um, so let's say, uh, anybody yell out a city? Okay, the smaller cities around San Diego. Raleigh. Well, Raleigh's big too, but like, let's, let's, and that's not around San Diego. So what, let, Chula Vista. Okay, so name your page. And if you want to do San Diego, just do a community, but you can do Chula Vista Homes for Sale, okay? When you name it like that, when somebody types in Chula Vista, and they type in the letter H, your page will likely appear for that potential buyer. So in a way, you're kind of hacking uh, Facebook. So we'll create Facebook pages for each property. So Chula Vista homes for sale. What's what's uh, in Raleigh? What's a neighborhood? The Hamptons homes for sale or Hamptons homes for sale. Again, it's just another way to hack Facebook. It's free to create, um, and then you can start running. Uh, you can start running ads with that page, with that video, with the floor plans, with the renderings you have for that property. So. Before you list the house, of course, your realtor should have some sort of consultation with you and you need to look at the comps. Um, and so an agent's gonna do what's typically called, I mean, you guys are pretty advanced real estate agents, so you guys already know what a CMA is. Number one thing when I was starting out is realtors did not use comps that were relevant. Uh, to use comps that are relevant, number one, I don't use a comp if you have to pass a busy street, if you have to pass over a river, if you have to pass over a train track, any sort of physical boundary, that comp is no good to me. Uh, even if you're on one side of a busy street and another property is on the other side of the busy street, I'm not gonna use that comp. Another thing that you wanna consider is the school district. This is where I see people make the biggest mistakes. You could literally be two houses away from another house, but if you have a different school district that's not as desirable, that's the number one reason why many people don't hit their ARVs is because they didn't research what school district that they were using for the comps. So even if you don't have access to the MLS, one thing you can do to find what are the comps is to go to 
Redfin. Redfin will actually pull up a list of the three schools. It'll show you the, the grade school, the middle school, and the high school. And then it'll also rate those schools through grade schools. So for example, if the realtor is using uh, a listing with a different school district, it could literally be right across the street. And that school, that grade school has a 10 rating and my house has a seven rating on the grade school, that's not a relevant comp. Uh, more than anything, I think schools, in my area at least, dictate your property value more than anything else. Um, and then, you know, you, obviously your square footage, all that. Uh, I'll make sure you guys get a copy of this, the slides so you can go through this. I'm not gonna show you how to run uh, comps uh, too much in detail, but here's an example. Um, let's see here. So this one's Bateman Elementary, this one's Henry. Look, look at this, you're not even passing a busy street. And you have one, two, one, two, three, four. Four schools. You literally go on, on any of these boundaries outside, you're in a different school district. Those comps are no good. So you really need to look at the schools. Again, that, that's why I have that up there. Um, and then, like I said, these things you can look at um, afterwards. but. Running the comps is super huge. So I'm gonna do an example uh, of a property at 123 Main Street, and this could be anywhereville in the United States of America. And the comps are between 190 to 200, so that's the ARV. So I'm gonna do a poll in the room and see um, what you guys think we should list the property as. So properties are selling fully rehab, this is a cheap area, Fully rehabbed between 190 to 200. How many people think you should list the property at 190? Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four. Okay, how many people think we should list at 195? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I think 10, okay, 11. How many think 199? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. How many in account? We got 25, let's just say. How many people think you should list at 200? Okay, less, I'd say somewhere like 12. How many people think you should list at 205? One, two, three. <laughs> we got some greedy people. 205, sorry, really greedy, Terry. All right, 250. 210. Really greedy people. All right, so we've got four. So you guys made which is it's pretty common. The people, I think, that raise their hand on the price, uh, this is the biggest realtors, at least as of this point, about 90% of agents in my market are making this mistake. <clears throat> this, you take one thing away from my presentation, you need to, this is the most important thing. So at 190, there's 500, and this, we have a tool called reverse prospecting we use in our MLS and we can see how many buyers are working with realtors, okay? At 190, there's 582 buyers working with agents. At 195, you see how it jumps down? There's 552. At 199, there's 547. And at 200, we've got 588, the most. You actually have more buyers at 200,000 than you do 190. People underprice their homes all the time. And the biggest takeaway is 199, which was the thing that most people had their hands up for, is where you have at least under 200, is where you have the least amount of buyers. Now, why is that? That is because people on the internet do searches in even increments. Realtors are lazy. They're, they're saying, I want to look at homes between 150. I'm setting up my buyer on a search. I'm going to set them up on searches between 150 to 200. And then another realtor is also going to be lazy and they're going to say, I'm going to show them homes at 200 to 250. And if you listed your home at 199.99, your house is not seen. And you've missed a big, big, big chunk of the market. So always, always, always list at the even number. And then you notice when you go up to 205, look how much substantially that that drops off. You lose 130 buyers. That's because again, people put their cap at 200. 
So by listing it at 200, what's gonna happen? You're gonna have multiple offers. That video that you just saw, why I have it in this video, the, the client thought his house was worth, and I don't even wanna go into it, but he thought it was worth about 40,000 less than it really was. Uh, but then he was asking me about price. I said, no, let's list it at 200,000. Sure enough, we got nine offers on the house because of pricing and of course the marketing we're doing. And we got, uh, I don't remember the exact numbers, but well over 12,000 over our asking price. So we actually got more by instead of going greedy and losing a hundred and some buyers, we listed it perfectly. And I've done it time and time again, where I'll go into a neighborhood where realtors will list it at 499, they'll drop it down to 470, they'll drop it down to 460. We'll go in, list it at 450, get seven, eight, nine, ten offers, and then we'll set the record for the neighborhood. So see where the buyers are at. Now again, you gotta be within reason of after you look at the CMA. But this is the biggest, uh, like I said, if you get anything from this presentation, um, take a look. This is what our reverse prospecting looks like in our MLS. Your MLS may not have reverse prospecting, so it's something you're gonna wanna see if you have it, because then every single house we list, we're able to pinpoint the price. So for example, I had a house one time where you'd think there'd be more buyers at 300, and for some reason there were more buyers at 325. It's just how people have their searches set up. So you wanna do this on every, and every time I've ran it, if whether uh, 499 has more than a 500, 500 always has a more. So that's only counting the MLS on the buyers. Guess what else is set up in even increments? Zillow, you see there, minimum price, 200,000. So if you listed your house at 199 and somebody starts their search at 200,000, your house isn't even seen by that buyer. What about Trulia? Trulia is the same exact way. You list it at 199, you're not gonna be seen. What about Redfin? Redfin, minimum price, it's 175, then 200. Um, so price, price, price. And then you wanna take high resolution. Photography, that is a necessity. Um, if you're listing your rehab for sale and the photos aren't stunning, uh, you either need to have a very, very serious conversation with the realtor or you need to get a new realtor. This, in today's age, there's no reason why a realtor should not be getting uh, uh, professional photos. So staging. How many people think staging is important? Great. What if you, as a rehabber, don't have the money to stage the house? Well, let's say you ran over your budget. What do you do? Whatever you have to, okay. I like that. Well, make the realtor pay for the staging. Sort of. Yeah. So I'll explain what I mean. So this, believe it or not, this is a million dollar home. That actually does not look like a million dollar home whatsoever. Bam, million dollar home. That's fake staging. That's not even real. That's digital staging, virtual staging. Uh, check out boxbrownie.com. I don't think I put that in uh, the slides, so you're gonna make sure you write down that website. It's $32 to virtually stage a photo. Super inexpensive. You're gonna definitely wanna do this for the master. You're gonna wanna do this for the living room, uh, the family room, maybe you have a finished basement. Makes your photos look phenomenal. This is, again, this is that million dollar house. Same thing, now we got a grand piano. Uh, beautiful, this is that same house. Bam, now we've got an awesome bookcase. Boxbrownie.com. So the buyer, I, this, this million dollar home, I literally sold it within 12 hours. He asked me, where's, where's, where's the bookcase? <laughs> I said, I, we're just giving you an idea of what the house can be. But that's what staging is. We got them in the door. Your goal on your rehabs is to get as many, if, if you lived in the home, it's a different story. But when you're flipping a house, your realtor's goal should be get as many warm bodies into that house because the more warm bodies that go into your house, the better chance you're gonna have to sell it. It's just a numbers game. So the more people that come through that house, the better.
Well, most... So, so what all you're doing here is showing them furniture layout because I've seen where a buyer will go into and they're like, oh, where do I put a couch? Where do I? So you're just giving them, they look at the virtual photo. It shows you exactly how you should lay out. These stagers that virtually stage the photos do a better job though, than I've seen most stagers do. Um, so they give, what they're doing is giving that. And I'm, I'm, I'm still a fan of physical staging. But if you don't have the budget, let's say your rehab went way over, I highly recommend virtual staging. And most of the time you're not staging the second bedroom, third bedroom, fourth bedroom. This is a way to do that. And I'll, I'll save the questions for the end so we can get through this. Here we got a fire in the fireplace, bed there. Now this was, okay, looks like a murder scene, right? So I had an investor from out of state. She called me. Actually, we have the buyers of this house in the back. All right. So uh, they actually bought. I mean, but this this looks really bad, right? She's like, you need to get this property listed tomorrow because she called me and told me, hey, I need to get this thing up and running as quickly as possible. And um, so they didn't have a chance to get cleaners in there, clean it out. So, bam. No longer a murder scene. But it gives, again, it gives buyers what's the, what possibilities does this house have? Um, this is a, I don't know if this is going to pay. So this is a, like a virtual tour that will create your, your, your videographer should be, or your realtor should be making these too. So you guys get the idea. But um, you should be getting like Hollywood style production. If uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, people, it says that people are consuming more and more and more and more video content. People are actually preferring to watch these videos over the photos. Uh, something that we do is we create content with the listing. So I'll give you an example. How many people uh, remember the the big thing about rompers, romp hymns, I should say. I don't know if you guys remember that. That was about a year ago. So I made like, there's this big craze. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to make a video about. Romper. I want to welcome you to 6012 Forest View Road, Unit 2D in Lyle. Some people say that the best things in life are free. Well, those people are wrong and they're liars because the best things in this world are rompers. And the second best thing is this condo. Now let me show you this magnificent, enormous palace, all within a 1,200 square foot blueprint. Let's get started. This condo features state-of-the-art entry-level appliances that I got a really good deal on Black Friday. Can't you just feel that Arctic cool blast coming through the camera? See the state-of-the-art industrial strength faucet securely fastened to this granite countertop. So just having fun with it. I mean, you're getting the exposure. Um, like that's something that gets shared. You know, we've done these videos in a lot of neighborhoods and we get the neighbors to like watch the video and then they're sharing it with all the neighbors. That's what you want. Like we've been outside filming video in front of the house and the neighbors are like, oh, let me know when this video comes out. I want to see it and show everybody. That's how you're getting exposure when you put yourself out there and do these silly things. Now, if you're a real estate agent in here and you're like, well, I'm Mr. Perf Perfect Realtor, but people, like, obviously I'm being sarcastic in, in this video. Like, people know that I like to have fun. I don't take myself too seriously. And every time I put out a video like this, and I have some that are, you know, crazier than that, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I should put this out there. Like, yeah. Every time I put it out there, it always, like, it elevates 
my standing in my real estate community. I was at the Chicago Association of Realtor, like big, you know, big gala, right? For the top producers and like all these huge like producers that were there were like coming up like, cause they knew my videos. Um, it really gets you a ton of exposure and puts yourself out there. So this was another thing that was crucial. Oops, I don't know if that last one's a video. Is there any way to play that? Hey, Terry, is there any way to play this? I'm going to show people this. Hit that play button down there. So um, Matterport, yeah, it's playing. We're good. So Matterport, you can get a 3D of the entire house. And then with the Matterport, this allows people anywhere in the world to virtually walk through the house like they're physically. So this is like, if you could see, let's see here. If you can see, this is my cursor on the computer. This is just a screen recording. So I'm like walking through the house. So that million dollar home, we showed the, the, the buyers that, that house. They then were able to go on, because most million dollar buyers are going to want to see the house two or three times before they make their final decision. It only took one time because they said, go on the 3D tour, take as much time as you want on that. And then, I, and then I watched the statistics. Somebody was on that that night for about two hours that they were going through this 3D tour and we were able to lock that up in a day. You can get floor plans uh, made up for your rehabs. This, is, this one's created for us through Matterport. So Matterport will create your floor plans for you. Again, this is something that you should be putting on your listing. The more information you have for the buyers, the better. Uh, and then this is a, kind of a silly high definition video. This is where I've actually got a awesome production team like Anna and Anna. So we'll play that. Yeah, this is a silly one, but. So again, putting yourself out there, but these guys, like I've gotten serious ones done. It depends if you're a realtor, like you have to judge, you know, your client, do they want something silly over the top or do they want, I've had it where it's a lifestyle video where somebody proposes to uh, his fiance in the, in the house, like super, super awesome, great production. Um, again, if you're doing a luxury home, like a million dollars, you should be getting something like this created. The, the videos I've made for those high-end buyers or sellers, they're my biggest advocate because there's not people out there doing this type of creative stuff. And this is the kind of stuff that gets shared. And uh, <laughs> that video was pretty like, I don't know, it was, it was a lot different because what we did is I pretended like I was the kid and then I had two parents that were kids that were my parents and telling me to get ready for school and I was catching Pokemon throughout the house. That's when Pokemon was big. But another thing you want to do is, is, is do print advertising. Now, a lot of realtors will tell you print advertising is dead. And I would agree with that to some extent. The reason why a lot of agents tell you that is because they don't want to spend the money to do it. So you can do every door direct. This is a great way to get mailers out there. And what's even more effective than every door direct is literally going door to door uh, with the flyer and then inviting them to an open house. Uh, we get these professional, everything you see there, we get that for uh, $50, super cheap. If you're a realtor, check out listingpowertools.com. Uh, get a ton of marketing for not a lot of money. So to get professional brochures, glossy stock is not expensive. Uh, and then once it's broadcasting to all the sites, you wanna make sure that this information is correct. I recommend, um, a listing, actually, I wouldn't recommend listing on a Tuesday. I think Thursdays, and, and I've really been finding a lot of success on uh, either Thursdays or Fridays, and listing, you want to capture that full day. Uh, every day on market is important. I've seen where realtors will list a house at 6 o'clock p.m. You just wasted one day on the market. When you're a brand new listing on the MLS, every minute counts. When you list it at 12.01 a.m., what that's doing is it allows the late nighters 
and the early risers to see that property. So we'll list our properties right after midnight to get full exposure for that first day and then get those showings lined up because what we want to happen on our first week is to get multiple offers. Uh, if you want to talk about uh, Facebook ads, definitely sit on uh, a hot seat with Bob. He is a master of Facebook ads, so I'm not going to cover that. Uh, but here's an example. So I ran, we run Facebook ads and mailers or, and or door-to-door -door flyers. So you can't really see that, but there's a comment there where Jessica, she tags her friend. Uh, looks like Loretta and then I don't know this person and then Loretta says that's so funny I was just looking at flyers in the mail for the same house So we literally saturated their market by technology and by grassroots marketing like everybody in this neighborhood knew that this house was for sale That's what you want your realtor to be doing for you when you're trying to sell your house um, Obviously the open house you want to have out a ton of signs and I've gotten the best luck usually on Saturdays or Sundays between one and three or two to four. Uh, again, your market may be different, but that's when we've seen just massive amounts of people come through. And if you really want to get a ton, a ton of exposure is rent a taco truck, an ice cream truck. I know Terry did an Indian truck, but providing food um, is a great way you know, I remember we were doing flyers for, for one of the houses with a taco truck. And we were walking up to the house and the guy's like, I don't want any, I don't want what you're selling. I said, hey, I got free tacos. He's like, oh yeah, come here. Oh yeah, my parents are looking to move. So like, <laughs> tacos, that's what you want. Like, <laughs> actually it does better than anything else. I've done the ice cream. I haven't tried the Indian truck, but tacos gets people there like nothing else. And if you don't like tacos, I'm, I'm sorry, you should just leave the room now. Um, so, you know, and this is just an example in my market in, in a medium priced property. You know, uh, an investor might be spending over 300000 could be 500000 could be 700000 How much is a typical realtor spending to market the house? 300 bucks if you're lucky. They might be getting the professional photos and, and all that. Um, that's less than 0.1% than the investor is spending. I think realtors should take risk at some, at some aspect of you listing a house and, and they're not, they don't have the same risk as you. So is it too much for them to ask to, oops, sorry about that. Is that too much to ask to have them spend some money on marketing? So generally I say, if you're paying a realtor two and a half percent, I think 1% of that should be going towards the marketing, and this just lays out some of those things that you could be, that they could be spending money on. But that will make your house stand out against the competition. In your market, there's thousands of homes for sale. How are you going to rise above all the other houses out there for sale? So this is just my opinion. If a realtor is only going to slap it on the MLS, you know, I would do something. You could work with a flat fee brokerage. Work with Redfin. Um, I mean, it's Redfin does great photos. I'm not a fan of Redfin, but they do great photos and they do 3D technology. And this is a, a <laughs> this is essentially almost a flat fee brokerage, um, but they have great photos and they do an awesome 3D. So if, if an agent isn't going to do more than that, um, I, I really think you shouldn't be paying them uh, a ton of money. So why should realtors want to work hard with you as investors and spend money to market your homes properly. Well, number one, realtors know that investor homes are really nice. Realtors always want to be associated with houses that are really done up, really nice. This is great marketing pieces for the realtors. So for that reason, you should, that's one of the reasons why they should be spending money to market. You have to sell, you're not like a homeowner that eh, I might change my mind and we might just live here for another year. Even though you're asking them to make a substantial investment of $2,000, $3,000 to market your home, you're an investor. Your goal is to flip the property. That's, you're not a seller that's going to change their mind and decide, hey, I'm not gonna sell anymore. So for that reason, they should be spending the money to market your home. And then you're, you're literally a, a source of repeat business. 
So these are things that you should be able to communicate to your realtor, this slide here, of why they should be spending money to market your home. Because if they're not doing this to your house, you as a seller could be leaving tens of thousands of dollars on the table. Because if it's not marketed correctly and not marketed aggressively, you're not gonna get as much. Um, and then another thing is, your house is gonna generate that realtor more business, and also that marketing that they're doing is also going to also boost them up too. So why, again, is a high-level marketing plan important? You're competing with hundreds or possibly thousands of homes for sale in your market. If you don't have a way to stand out, your house is gonna be overlooked. Some of my markets in Chicago, over 50% of the markets that are homes that are listed for sale fail to sell. Um, so it's important to, to, to really market your home aggressively. And so a lot of times realtors will say, hey, well, uh, you say, hey, why is my house not selling? Well, your price too high. No, you're not, let's, let's, let's dive into other than price, what are you doing to market my house? So you need to have that conversation because you lowering your price $10,000, $20,000, $25,000 may not be the answer. Um, and again, following a plan or not, is going, you're leaving money on the table. So how do you hold a realtor accountable? You need to be upfront with your realtor that you expect nothing less than them following a step-by-step -step checklist. You can use you know, some of the things I talked about in, in this presentation, but you're looking them to do a Matterport. Of course, you're looking for professional photos. You want a website created. These are all important things. You want a video created. Um, and then ask to see re receipts or proof that the marketing plan is executed. You wanna make sure that you don't just give them a marketing plan and then they don't execute. You sign a listing agreement with them, have an addendum that says, if you don't follow my marketing plan, the listing agreement is void. So again, realtors should be fighting for your business as investors with the amazing properties that you guys are putting out. So uh, my last slide will just be, be in business only if you are in business to build one. Um, many times we're not holding people accountable that like we should be. And I didn't know all these things in these slides really in depth until I became a real estate agent myself. And so that's why I'm putting it out there for you guys. So now you have something that you can also uh, make sure your realtor follows. So do you guys have questions about any of the marketing strategies? Good, we got lots of questions. Where did you find the best tacos here? <laughs> at the, they have a taco bar at the, uh, in the uh, cafe. I haven't, eat, I haven't eaten any, to, Bob, where was the taco place you went to? Los Tacos, yeah, I haven't tried those yet, but. Good question. Best question of the night. Nobody's going to top that question, but go ahead. try. <laughs> for the Facebook page, you said to do it one for each property, mm -hmm. and then you said the city. So each page you're naming like anywhere, town, USA, and then the property name and the. So I wouldn't even say name. USA. I would say let's just or, let's just use Cancun for example. So yep. it'd be Cancun, and then the next word should be either homes or real estate. So. Um, and then you could use another variation of houses. So let's say you've done three rehabs in Cancun. Well, then I would do one is houses, homes, uh, real estate, any other term that would correlate to real estate. Because you want just a way for people to be able to find that page. And then you're adding the address after that. And then I would put a, a dash sign at the end, space, dash, space, and then 123 Main Street. How hard is it to have that conversation with your realtor to prove that he's doing the marketing that you hired him to do? And that's the first thing they always say, oh, you gotta lower the price because you've got it overpriced. So how do you have the conversation that I'm not overpriced and then? It's hard to have that conversation with them. 
it's hard to have that conversation with them because they think they're doing everything right. Correct. They yeah. think they did all the marketing that they need to do. They think that they priced it right, but after 10 days, 14 days, they go, oh, you overpriced it, so now we need to drop the price. And we need to have that conversation with them with, well, what did you do in the marketing to get us to that price? Yeah, correct. I, I would have the conversation before you list the house, um, before you ever list the house. Now, if you're in a situation now, so up front, you need to tell them, here's a checklist. You may have your own checklist, but here's what I'm expecting you to do. I want professional photos. I want a professional video. The, the professional video can even co-brand you. I co-brand my investors that I work with where, I, hey, I'm here with uh, John from ABC Home Solutions. He's, you know, and then it's co-branding you too. Um, I want a Matterport done. I want floor plans done. I want these, I mean, literally you outline this and you make them sign that they're going to do that. And if they don't do that, the listing agreement is null and void. But to do that up front. Now, if you're in a position, then I would sit down with them and then go through, hey, did you do professional photos? Did you do professional video? Did you do like, <laughs> obviously they probably did professional photos, um, but uh, that, that's what I would, I would just go ask those same questions that you, you would have done on the checklist that you would have given to them up front. Joshua. So I have a 1% over here. Oh. Yellow shirt, I'm hard to miss. Uh, I've got a 1% listing agent. Mm -hmm. I'm in a market that's hot. I'm selling everything basically at the price or above that I list for. Is it worth incrementalizing, paying more to get the marketing plan? Really depends on your market. I can't speak to your market, but you may be in a market where everything I just said isn't as relevant, right? The, the things that will be relevant, of course, is, the, is pricing it right. So I can't remember if you raised your hand for which price, but looking at that price, uh, to even maximize it. So instead of getting five offers on your house, now you got 12 offers on your house, you know, because anytime we get like above five offers, I'm extremely aggressive with, with the buyer. I'm like, if you really want this house, you're gonna sign something that says if it doesn't appraise, you're gonna still buy it. I want you to sign something that says you're buying it as is, even though it's a fully rehabbed house, you're still gonna buy it as is. You don't like it, I got eight other offers on the table. So you're able to really become extremely so in some ways possibly yes um, if it's going to get you another five you know i don't know how many offers you're getting on your properties but then you can really control the situation because how many times have you gotten offers um, and then you only get maybe you only get one offer and then if they back out you, you know i've got eight other offers that really want this house go ahead and back out i don't care sometimes we'll even get higher offers after the fact you know, so it really depends on your market. Again, I can't speak to it, but if, if the 1% guy is doing a great job, number one thing, make sure the pricing is correct. And you're still, even with the 1%, you're getting professional photos. That's still extremely, extremely, extremely important. And Josh, I didn't know if you touched base on listing agreement time lengths. Mm -hmm. um, what's, what's your experience in your market? Like they want three months, six months, or what's your experience? If you're the investor, you dictate whatever you're comfortable with doing. Uh, you, if, because if, if somebody, if I can't sell somebody's house in three months, it's not worth my time anyway, to be honest, as a realtor. Like, why does a realtor want a one-year listing agreement? They're, they're holding you hostage for a year. Right. In our market, they typically want it six months. Yeah, mo most most realtors do, but that's because they're just like, oh, well, in, in no. a year's time, I've got a really good chance of it selling, right? I, no, I, I agree. I just that our particular market's extreme. The brokers are extremely controlling of the agents, and mm -hmm. they will point blank tell you in many cases, just they won't even take it. It's it's a weird market that we're in. Here. Yeah, so. I mean, you got to look for you know uh, the young, hungry agents. That to be honest, if they're young, they might do a better job at selling it because they're willing to do these things. Those sound like the you know I call them the rhino agents that have been out there forever. You know, they 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 created the MLS themselves. You know, they they uh, there's a lot of agents that you just can't change their mentality and the way that they've been doing it for the last 20, 30 years is the right way. But yet they're still pricing homes at 199 when they should be listing it at 200. Most agents, I do this poll in rooms full of agents, and the agents, like I said, 80% of the time get it wrong. That's right. 
and it's all agents, you know? Hey Josh, uh, do you feel a price point between where things should be staged or matterported? Um, again, it depends on your market. Um, I, I really, I think physically staging the house is going to make it way better and, and sell it for more. Now, again, let's say you're in an area where houses are only selling for 200,000, but you might not have a huge budget to, to stage the house. But I think if you, I really think physical staging is most important in houses with an awkward layout. So if, if it's like this room here, it doesn't make sense. You need a good stager to come in there and then make, make that space look sense. But if you've got a great floor plan, it's now with the digital staging, I mean, I'm, I'm even getting more to the opinion that it's really not needed. And printing out the picture so people would walk into the thing and they can still kind of visualize it instead yep. of walking in and being shocked that it's empty. Absolutely, that's a great idea. <laughs> Hi, Josh. Um, great info. Thank you. Um, question on your Facebook paid posts. What do you find is the best target that you found? Are you doing a radius around the house yep. or are you doing a certain demographic? Uh, well, number one, definitely uh, distance around the house is super important. And I forget where I heard this statistic, but it's like it's something like 70 percent of the time your buyer lives within a 10 mile radius of the house. And Facebook has that. I, th I think it might even be a five mile radius. It's super, it's super close. So like, for example, that million dollar home that I was talking about that I sold in a day, they didn't even live within a five mile radius, but their parents did. And that the parents are the ones that told them about the house. And Bob made a great point. I was in his hot seat. He, 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 he hit the nail on the head when he said, uh, or hit the head on the nail when he said, many times the parents will see the house and then tag their kids on that ad. Um, so that's a way to kind of pre-market the house before it even, you know, gets listed. So, um, and then as far as age, you know, if, if you're doing a million dollar home, for example, I usually am looking that at least they're making 250,000 a year. So you can put in the um, income uh, things that you want on Facebook. So I will do the income once you start getting into higher price point properties. Um, and then usually I'm, I'm, I'm usually cutting out the 18 year olds and usually going like 20. Again, this is on the higher price. I usually move that up a little bit, at least to 25. If it's a first time home, I'll keep the 18, you know, if it's around that $200,000 price point. Can I kind of build on that for a second and talk about transitional neighborhoods where your neighbors might be like, you know, it might be a flop house next to a $300,000 three, two. You know, so is that gonna is that distance thing gonna work for that? I mean, what if your buyers are coming from across town, or they live with their parents up, you know, twenty miles away in the suburbs, and they're gonna live in town? Yeah, so that's a great point. I mean, everything again. It's I'm I'm just giving generalities, but in a transitional neighborhood, they're probably still gonna come from the area. Um, they might be over in that next area that, you know, let's say one area used to be kind of we'll just say you know was a little, little questionable at one time, right? Um, they know about that because usually they're fairly close to it and that, hey, it's, you know, it's going through gentrification. So they're still going to be pretty close. You can target, absolutely, you can do renter targeting campaigns, especially on the first time home buyers more than anything. Um, another thing that um, if you're doing what I would say first time homes and, you know, again, maybe, uh, maybe one of those gentrification neighborhoods. There are some realtors, I have not done this yet, I'm not set up for this. Um, I've had where people have come to me in some of these neighborhoods. And I know there's a realtor in my market that brings people through credit repair. And so he raises, he has homegrown buyers. So I'll use him to list homes in some neighborhoods, even over me because it's not about the MLS. He's bringing buyers that he's been doing credit repair with those buyers for the last two years, three years. He has my listing. He's gonna show my house first versus any houses on the MLS. So, um, you know, I'm not the greatest realtor in every single example, 
Um, for some areas, I will be because I'm going to smoke them with the marketing. But you can't compete with somebody who has the homegrown buyers, you know. All right, Josh. Um, one thing to offer you real quick, and then I've got a two-part question uh, for your audiences that you're using. I've had good success also targeting real estate agents, mm -hmm. which is something very similar, you know, very easy to prove on Facebook. So real estate agents as a second audience Absolutely. for those open houses. Um, and then my two-part question, you, um, you mentioned that you do every door direct mail before open houses. Um, I thought I heard you also mention that you uh, put boots on the ground and actually walk and personally invite neighbors. Is that accurate? And if so, yeah, how if, many? If, if not me, then perhaps someone from my team Okay. And then I let them brand it to themselves. Okay. Um, so that, so I like, so once you start building a team as a realtor, that will generate business. So like that taco house, literally two houses down, I went down and did some flyers. I listed their house like three weeks later. Okay. So as a realtor, they should want to do that, especially if they're getting a taco truck. The neighbors are super, super impressed by that. And I didn't even go into with the taco truck. You don't need, the, the realtor doesn't have to pay 100% of that. They can split the cost with a lender, which that's what I do. And it gets their costs down. There you go. So um, my opinion, grassroots, door to door is key. Okay. And then um, second part of that question was at your actual open house, um, what sort of social media, I've, I've seen a lot of different strategies, but what sort of strategies do you use to maybe get people to post pictures or videos or anything, maybe sign in and, and get their information for future list building or anything like that? Do you do any of that? Oh, absolutely. Um, that I have not done where I have like maybe take a picture in front of them. Now that's, that's a million dollar sales tip right there. Take a photo of the taco house or the taco truck in front of the house, put the address, and then you'll be entered in to win something. That is brilliant. Hold on, give him a round of applause for that. Oh my God. Uh, we've, we've had it where people, they have to sign in to, to go into the house and we have an iPad there. And they enter in all their information and then we send out thank you cards and everything to the people. Um, but I love that content. I know Tammy did something like that. Where's Tammy at? No, I don't know if she's here, but Tammy had where take a picture of her limo and then they get entered into a contest. So you can create a hashtag, maybe the address, and they get entered in. I love that idea. Love that idea. Thank you for that check. Yeah. Thank you. Jack. Yeah, that is a million dollar. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. Josh, quick question on the timing of when you switch the signage over from your sign as a rehabber when you're trying to pre-sale it to the actual listing agent. Is it, you know, two weeks? Like, what's an appropriate time for the listing agent to be able to say, now I want my picture up and I want it to be coming soon? It'd be, yeah, I'd say maybe two weeks. Yeah, the, well, the sign that I'm talking about needs to be co-branding you and them anyway just by license law they need to have their information on there but it's also co-branding you so to be honest as a realtor me having a four foot or four by four foot or four foot by eight foot sign i have nothing against keeping that sign up the entire time because that's just a huge billboard it depends, it depends on how your signage is, right? So you might have a sign that says coming soon and da 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 and then you can change it out maybe even for a new four by four sign or you just change it to a normal realtor sign. But that construction sign will still need to be co-branded just on their rules or you just put up your own construction sign if you want. But I, I suggest you having the realtor flip the bill for it. Hey Josh, uh, so I'm a general contractor in the Raleigh market. <laughs> And uh, I've got two questions. So first question is, what is your opinion on length of listing agreement with realtors? You know, they want you to sign a year agreement. I want to sign a 90 day agreement uh -huh. because, you know, that, that does a couple of things, but I'd like to know your opinion on question one. I, I mean, it's crazy. To sign. I mean, I've signed 30 day listing agreements. If I know it's going to sell, I've signed 30 day, I've signed 14 day listing agreements. It really depends on, are they confident on what they're telling you? If, if they're telling you a price and they're worried about signing a one year listing agreement, then they're, 
they're really blowing smoke up, you know what? Um, because they're not confident in their ability to sell it quickly. Now, if they're up front and saying, hey, I don't know if this is, you know, this may take a little while, that's a different story. Um, but <laughs> again, a realtor should not have a problem with signing a shorter listing agreement if they are telling you the truth and they think that they'll be able to sell it in the time that they're telling you. All right, so second question is, you know, I've got multiple new construction projects going on all, all over mm -hmm. Raleigh. And of course the realtor wants all of them, right? I mean, you know, so what is your opinion on diversifying that out? You absolutely should. I don't think you should put all your eggs in one basket unless it's like this, this agent is uh, just a complete rock star and every house that they sell sells for 10, 20,000 more than the others then I would go to that agent exclusively, but you should have realtors competing for your business. Well, my, my thinking is, you know, it just keeps everybody honest. It keeps them on their toes. Correct. And, you know, and they know here. that they mess up. There's another, you know, there's another two, three realtors right behind them. I highly suggest not putting all your eggs in one basket unless, like I said, that realtor is just a complete rock star yeah. and is knocking it out of the ballpark every single time. Okay, thanks. We have time for one last question. Does anybody have one last question? It's gotta be good. Ooh, <laughs> the boss <laughs> man. Nice. Josh, would you consider moving to Raleigh, North Carolina so all my houses? That's, I, it was lots of base in that, what'd you say? <laughs> would you consider? <laughs> would you consider moving to Raleigh, North Carolina oh. to sell all my houses? Yeah. <laughs> May, yeah, maybe. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I'll consider it. I'll let you know tonight at the bar. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys.